Um, next talk we have is from Rob Weber. Uh, it's going to be talking about turtles. Rob um, uh, started off in 1969, I believe, and working at the Irrigation <coughs> Research Station in Korea. <laughs> uh, and then in 1975, I started working for the Fisheries Wildlife Division and all the incarnations of the departments ever since until his retirement in 2012. Should I come up with a few more months, you would have got another name badge with Debbie. There you go. So thank you, Rob. <coughs> yeah, um, I've been involved in a, in a study for broadshell turtles um, in the lower Goulburn uh, uh, River region, um, including the, the Barma Forest. This is a collaborative project, um, including my former employer, DSC and the Australian Freshwater Turtle Conservation and Research Association, um, which is a volunteer uh, group. Um, all the members uh, of AFRA that participate in these surveys are now part of uh, Turtles Australia, um, and it was under Turtles Australia that uh, we attempted to do some work in 2013. But unfortunately, we weren't able to uh, continue uh, the project because there was this dispute over ownership of nets. Um, <laughs> Zoos Australia um, have also been involved in uh, 2012 um, to do some uh, uh, analysis of uh, health and um, parasites uh, within uh, the turtles. So the aims of our project was to confirm First, that the presence of turtles at various uh, wetlands uh, to identify areas where there might uh, be some opportunities for nest protection um, and target of uh, fox control, as Katie pointed out the other uh, uh, morning, that foxes take a, a large percentage of our um, eggs um, and destroy the nesting uh, sites. And to, we also wanted to look at the general health, so we've weighed the turtles, measured them, and compared their, their health status. Now, the, the broadshell turtle uh, is classed as endangered in uh, Victoria, and the uh, short necked or hemidura um, is classed as data deficient. The reasons for, for that is that uh, the endangered species are uh, at risk of disappearing in the wild if the present land use and other causes uh, continue. Um, and the amateurin is uh, its status is there, it's at risk because we just don't uh, know enough about its uh, uh, ecology uh, and distribution to you know, be sure exactly where it, it sits uh, within its threat status. Uh, as Katie mentioned, there's three species of, of turtles. Um, the uh, Emidura, which is uh, on the left hand, hand side. I've taken the, the shot within the, uh, the buckets that we transported the turtles just to give you uh, some idea of the, the difference in sizes. Uh, the Emidura, the long necked uh, turtle, which we're all uh, familiar with, and farm dams. Um, and the broadshell uh, turtle. The broadshell turtle, um, ones that we've caught, uh, was just shy of uh, six kilogram, um, and just shy of half a metre in uh, carapace length. Uh, the Emmy uh, jurors, um, we had them from uh, a lot of about three and a half uh, kilos um, and the uh, long necks probably uh, top round uh, just <coughs> two kilos. Uh, that's a shot of the um, broadshell turtle. Um, when we yeah, tip them upside down and you can 
can see that the size of that uh, neck, uh, the strength of, uh, of that neck uh, compared to the uh, ordinary long neck uh, turtle. Um, the, it's reported that the broad-shelled turtle doesn't suffer from predation uh, from foxes uh, as much as the immature does because they're, they're heavy and harder to turn over. The, if you do turn them over, they just go starfish, but arms and, and legs um, stick out. So if a fox managed to um, get them over, you'd certainly get a feed. Um, and they come down to, um, when they hatch out of the eggs, at uh, 35 millimetres. Uh, this was uh, a little fella um, which was located down at uh, to build Bagoon. Uh, you can notice see that uh, the, the shell's just about closed up from absorbing the, uh, the yolk sac. And the egg is intercepted uh, coming out of the vineyard, um, just about to enter the, uh, the woodland. And the difference is uh, with the uh, Amigura um, short neck uh, species. Um, and it, it's not able to tuck its neck in it as well as the other ones and uh, is very uh, prone to being attacked by foxes at, uh, at nesting time. So the reason we got concerned is that within Victoria, um, with our DSA database only had 29 legitimate records. There were actually 41 records in the, uh, the database, um, but when I looked at them, um, when you have the same person from the same turtle at the same location on the same day, uh, they're probably duplicates. <laughs> um, and there were three records uh, of the broad shell uh, turtle. This one's associated with the Murray River and the, the tributaries uh, to the Murray. Um, when you find them down in, uh, uh, in the Yarra River or in uh, Albert Park Lake, they probably escapes from somebody's uh, uh, fish tank. And surprisingly, there was only one record uh, within the Golden uh, Catchment. Um, I know that there have been uh, more reports that for some reason our DSC uh, database hasn't kept up with that. Um, it's not a fault of the people running the, uh, the database, but probably just a lack of uh, Resources that we probably do need to um, uh, pick up some of the management uh, of our um, legislation. Um, for instance, uh, we have people that, um, that are involved in um, rescuing uh, animals. They have to put in returns. I discovered uh, when people were aware of our survey. Um, at Yarrabonga, the lady said, oh, well, I've been catching these broadsheet turtles up here and I've got a couple that I'm fixing the shell on. Those reports have been going down to, to DSC, but uh, DSC haven't been taking those records from wildlife shelters and putting them into the database. Um, there are uh, some issues with regards to as a person competent to identify the species in that, but I'm sure we put the resources into checking the validity, making sure that if we wanted to know more information that they took some photographs, something that we could add substantially to it, our knowledge from processes we've already put in train for people to report uh, to us. Similarly with the, the Murray River uh, turtle, um, there's quite a lack in, in uh, report. So part of it, uh, our job is just to go out and improve the the knowledge of where the uh, turtles might be. So in 2011, um, we had a look at um, yeah, Yelantner Island uh, within the National Park area. There's a couple of uh, large uh, billabongs, uh, particularly the Dead River and um, the uh, Dead End Lagoon. Um, we did nest surveys along the Murray River uh, within the, uh, the area of, of that uh, graph. 2012, uh, 
we surveyed uh, wetlands within the Lower Goulburn um, area, uh, the Dow Lagoon, um, and at uh, Yamburna, and uh, the Wabadi Lagoon Coys uh, Bridge. The equipment we, we use, like there's a lot of fish surveys, but uh, a lot of fish people aren't reporting uh, uh, turtles. So it's a specialised uh, equipment to catch the turtles. Um, these are uh, cathedral nets for catching uh, immaturas and the broad shell. Um, we have a bait in the, the bottom uh, structure. It's a little The, the bottom structure and then is allowed to come through that, that funnel um, and collect or access air. Uh, so we can leave that uh, in the water um, for quite a few hours. Uh, initial surveys tried to use just the yummy uh, drop nets and it had to be put, uh, lift them off onto um, catch to it. So this is a, a vast improvement. We usually place these nets by watering them, them out because it's, it's important that uh, the net sits on the bottom uh, otherwise the turtle is going to access the bait from underneath. So uh, we find walking them out and keeping the, the net to make sure it's on the, the bottom is a lot safer than dropping out from a bait. But, um, you can uh, use the bait as well. Uh, we also use fight nets uh, in the very shallow waters where we uh, expect the uh, eastern long neck to be. Uh, you also mentioned that uh, as soon as there's a, a bit of uh, water in the floodplain, uh, the long neck gets out of the main uh, water bodies uh, and accesses every uh, puddle and uh, borrow pit that there is uh, to be. So, we didn't expect to find uh, any of the other turtles here, but we couldn't say that uh, the other turtles aren't there unless we actually uh, look for them as well. So, so in those uh, two years, um, we've confirmed that uh, there's presence of Murray turtles uh, and Borchell turtles at Gilapna Island, Medell, Lagoon, Rocky Creek, and Cruz uh, Bridge. So it's just about every uh, spot we've been to, we've uh, found them. And because we were out there looking for, for turtles um, and we talked about what we were, were doing, um, we also had a number of people uh, present us with their information. As I mentioned, we had the Develop Lagoon and people say, I've got uh, nested turtles. Um, we've had people at uh, Macaulay's Bridge show us photographs and where they uh, see nesting turtles. So at uh, the Lapner Island, um, the green dots uh, indicate where we uh, had the trap sites for uh, turtles and the blue dots show up where we uh, saw some of the, uh, the turtles' nests. Now when we're looking for a uh, turtles' nest, um, we only identifying uh, sites most often uh, provided by uh, foxes, but there can be a number of other uh, things there. So it's usually a hole on the ground um, with eggshells uh, scattered close by. Um, Some more eggshells uh, scattered around a the hole there. Um, and these holes can last for uh, a couple of years. So the broadshell turtle nests in uh, March to May um, and that was a time we were out having to find uh, fresh nests. Um, unfortunately we haven't found anything that was fresh. Most of the nests that we found um, were uh, older, so either the last season or the season uh, before and they could have been from uh, any of the species. At Bedell Lagoon, a concentration of nests that we had there, we uh, took the shells back and sort of 
we constitute them and, and did a measurement uh, on the eggshells there, we're pretty confident that they were the uh, amateurs that were uh, nesting there. So, um, the eggshell size and shape varies between the, the species. Um, under the uh, little uh, bush in the foreground is a new nest, uh, most likely of the broad-shelled uh, turtle, um, because it was um, uh, seen there nesting in uh, April, just uh, before Anzac Day, um, a couple of years ago. Uh, the turtles have not hatched from that a as yet, and we've had a very dry season, and it's uh, known that uh, long neck or the broad-shelled turtle eggs um, can last over 600 days within uh, the soil. So we're not concerned, they can still uh, pop out uh, next summer. Um, but this is a, uh, a highly populated area, um, walkway um, behind a, a group of houses within uh, the city of Shepparton. Um, the turtle has no trouble ripping through the, the, the tough cooch grass uh, to lay its uh, eggs. And that, that's the only way we managed to find, to uh, identify where brook shell turtles are nesting. When you happen to be out there, the one is uh, digging the nest. Because usually they, they cover the nest that well. Once it's stuck, they uh, surface down there, they drop the shell down with the, the top of it and it's a very uh, tough surface um, to protect uh, the eggs coming in. Um, and this photo is from uh, Dolly Uber at uh, Barma. We managed to see this one on her uh, back lawn. Um, a couple of other sites of the, where we're looking for turtle eggs at, at Deep River. A gentle slope there, easy for the turtles to, uh, to get out. Um, and at the Den End Lagoon, the little red flags indicate where uh, the turtle nests were found. We usually use a trowel when we find uh, those nests because often after the fox had predated it, there might be one or two uh, eggs left uh, within the nest. Um, and if they, we find any eggs in that, cover the, the hole up again and protect it with some uh, netting um, to protect anything else to be <coughs> up. And at um, Gunbow, the people from Turtles Australia have had a, a few successes in um, hatching turtles out from those sorts of uh, locations. Some of the sites we were looking for uh, turtle uh, eggs, nest sites, um, were some of the the sand hill areas, uh, when we found them covered in uh, caltrop uh, or spiny bird grass, and if you ever try to walk through spiny bird grass, you only get a few metres and you get back out pretty quick. And I assume that the, uh, the turtles might do the same. Um, a couple of other uh, problems that the turtles might uh, have, some of our uh, waterway management. Broken River, for instance, we used to uh, all the river improvement work and we ripped out all the snags and uh, we wanted to cut the, the whole of the, the Broken River uh, by metres uh, with steep banks. So obviously turtles are not going to be able to, to climb out of the, the river to nest there. It's probably not a great one because there will be plenty of other bends and things that uh, they can get out. But, um, shortly after we surveyed for nest sites because nobody else could get in there um, as soon as they could. Uh, that was what the nest site uh, looked like at the uh, end um, That's a, a view of uh, the lagoon at uh, Medela and the turtle nest sites that we found at indicated there the blue uh, stars. Um, we were hopeful that we might find more nests there this year because at the time that we looked there, the only 
a vial of domestic soap was brought against the river um, with the sandal being sown to lucerne. Uh, but the lucerne crop was a, a failure and when we went out there this year to check that it was any new one, we found the whole place um, uh, ploughed up a bit. So <coughs> the only uh, available in this itself was a short, short strip in this uh, sandy lane uh, soil. Uh, a quick view of um, Gorris Bridge. Um, the resident there um, has located the, the broad shell and um, walking backwards and forwards um, and uh, managed to take some photos that we could confirm that identity. And they did find some two leaks in the levee bank, um, but uh, we're not too sure what species they were. So the, the take home uh, message is that uh, of all the species uh, that will demonstrate connectivity uh, of the floodplain and its supports uh, with the river, the turtles is one, but unfortunately at this stage we haven't got enough records to, to put that to use. In fact, the, uh, the whole Broken Creek system hasn't got one record of turtles uh, in our database. So when the scientists review how do we manage the Broken uh, Creek, uh, turtles should get a, a mention. Um, and uh, our group walk around is also okay that you know, we obviously need to think about uh, the distance that we uh, protect our rivers. When we set it here, people thought now one chain was, was good enough, um, but uh, the broad shell uh, will run up to 400 metres from the, uh, the river uh, to lay its eggs. And other uh, management uh, issues, as I've already mentioned, caltrop and spiny uh, grass, and uh, Parks Vic have already acted on, on uh, some of our findings with regards to uh, their control work. And with the uh, image Europe, we sort of notice that it's quite happy and it's, well, prefers and it's quite close to the, uh, the borderline. And it appears that as soon as it finds a gap in the trees where a bit of sunlight comes through, that's where it will uh, start nesting. And soil type doesn't seem to worry. Also, I mentioned that yeah, don't be afraid to talk about your work. Um, a lot of the records uh, and, well, it certainly contributed greatly to uh, our appreciation of where turtles were because people knew we were out there and a lot of them talk, talked to us uh, and I uh, used me here uh, to uh, promote a number of uh, phone calls and, and contacts. So particularly in projects like this, don't be afraid to talk about before you have any results. And I also mentioned that uh, we need to support the ESC so that they can have enough resources that the information that the researchers get gets into the database. I've come across a, a paper written in 2002 that had five broad shell temple records in the game. Now the database is sitting there with nothing. Thank you.